The stock that was on fire in 2022 is now making a comeback. Meta has seen a 100% surge in the last 3 months. But why did it fall in the first place? TikTok emerged as a strong new player in the social media market, giving Meta a run for its money. Apple's ad tracking transparency that started in late 2021 also had a significant impact on Meta's ad business. After the earnings on February 3rd, the company lost more than $200 billion in a day, a loss record for a US company. Wall Street reports suggested that Mark Zuckerberg made a bold move by betting big on his Metaverse vision and changing the company's name from Facebook to Meta. This decision received criticism from the media and the industry experts. All while Meta's financials took a hit, the company's revenue declined, free cash flow came close to negative, and margins dropped across the board. Finally, the company's headcount was consistently growing. It went from 17,000 in 2016 to 87,000 in third quarter 2022. All in all, it was indeed a challenging year for Meta. But before we get to what changed, while all of these were happening, I was actually increasing my position in Meta. And the reason that I was buying when everyone was incredibly bearish on the stock, in fact, there is a tweet from Gorgavin, he's a good follow on Twitter, where he says that he bought Meta below $100 around 3 months ago. And the replies to his tweets are incredible. Everybody believed it was going down even more, to $70 to $50. But as a long-term investor, I like to look at the business itself first, rather than the stock price. Meta, the parent company, company of Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp has an incredible domination throughout the planet. There are 5.16 billion people with an internet access. Of those, 1.42 billion live in China where Meta's products are banned. So that leaves 3.74 billion people available to use Meta's products. And even in mid-2022, 3.65 billion of the 3.74 available was using a Meta app every month and 2.88 billion was using every day. All while super investors were hugely investing in Meta and the company is not unprofitable like Snapchat, Pinterest or many others. In fact, it has always been profitable. Also, reading the reports and earnings calls, I realized that two of those problems had the same solution. TikTok was gaining market share because of short form videos and its remarkable AI recommendation technology. And most of the ATT changes could be solved by an even better AI for ads on platforms. Actually, Apple's changes even helped Meta to a degree because Meta was the only player in the industry that had the capital to invest in AI to get around those changes. Also, while most of the people thought all of Meta's capex was going toward their reality apps, it was in fact being used for family of apps. So now Meta has reels to compete with TikTok and it has been growing very fast and the effect of Apple's changes has decreased significantly both thanks to Meta's huge investments in AI. So the business started to gain some traction again. Finally, on November 9th, Meta announced 11,000 layoffs which is around 13% of their workforce. Mark Zuckerberg himself wrote a message to employees and the public where he said, I have decided to reduce the size of our team by about 13% and let more than 11,000 of our talented employees go. We are also taking a number of additional steps to become a leaner and more efficient company by cutting discretionary spending and extending our hiring freeze to Q1. And then later in the letter, he says, I believe we are deeply underestimated as a company today. Billions of people use our services to connect and our communities keep growing. Our core business is among the most profitable ever built, with huge potential ahead, and we are leading in developing the technology to define the future of social connection and the next computing platform. So Meta finally had addressed some of the issues and gave confidence to its investors. Also, the day before the announcement, Meta was trading at around $96 per share, a $250 billion market cap. In fact, digging a little bit deeper, we can see that family of apps, which is Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp, that everybody claimed to be dead, made $56 billion in net income in 2021, and $42 billion in 2022. So if they scrapped the Reality Labs division, their PE using family of apps earnings was only 5.95 for 2022. Adding Reality Labs losses, that brought PE up to 8.92. I consider it to be incredibly low for a company with such a deep mode like Meta. So now, let's look at the highlights from the earnings that caused Meta's stock price surge. They missed the earnings but beat the revenue estimates. Now looking at the highlights, we can see that Family Daily Active People, this is the daily active people on all of the apps, had an increase of 5% year over year to 2.96 billion daily active users. Ad impressions increased 18% year over year, so Meta has shown much more ads. Revenue declined 1%, but on constant currency, it was up 4%. So the drop was mostly the effect of macro events. Their costs and expenses increased 23%, which is very high, honestly. 
And finally, the buybacks. The main reason, as far as I can see, the stock is up. Meta, for the full year, bought back $27.93 billion worth of shares. But we have to factor in the stock-based compensation as well, which was almost $12 billion. So the real buyback was around $16 billion. And they had $10 billion authorized to do further buybacks. But they increased that number by $40 billion more. So now, they have around $50 billion for buybacks. Their headcount was 86,000. But that number includes the layoffs as well. And it will drop by at least 11,000 in Q1 2023. And they also froze hiring through Q1. We will see how that goes, but I believe stock-based compensation will go down as well. But at the very least, we can expect another $10 billion worth of stock-based compensation, so they will have around $40 billion net for buybacks. And their current market cap is $489 billion. So that means they can buy back 8.17% of their shares outstanding at these prices. Now, there is one thing that I hope the management can get better at, and that is their buybacks timing. They are not opportunistic at buybacks at all, because they have bought back massively even over $300 per share. And they knew their expenses and Metaverse vision would most likely cause the stock to fall. So I think they could have waited, but I guess they wanted to meet the sell orders as well to slow the downward momentum of their stock. But if you look at Warren Buffett, he only does buybacks when he sees there is a good amount of gap between Berkshire's intrinsic value and market cap to maximize the returns he is getting through those buybacks. So these were the highlights. Now digging just a little bit deeper, we can see they have set efficiency 33 times in earnings call and 7 times more in follow-up call. So I hope they can keep their promise and increase their efficiency because as a share owner, I for one am tired of Meta employees using their biggest competitor TikTok to show how little they work at Meta. Finally, I want to highlight some parts of Zuckerberg's speech on the call that I thought to be important. He claims 2023 to be the year of efficiency. Then he talks about layoffs and he says, clearly, this was the beginning of our focus on efficiency and not the end. He talks about spending less on capex, removing middle management, which I think is really important. You don't want managers managing other managers. And then he says they are going to be more proactive about cutting projects. So that was from the first part of his speech. He later talks about, and I will read these parts, Facebook and Instagram are shifting from being organized solely around people and accounts you follow to increasingly showing more relevant content recommended by our AI systems. This covers every content format, which is something that makes our services unique. But we are especially focused on short-form video since Reels is growing so quickly. Reels plays across Facebook and Instagram have more than doubled over the last year while the social component of people resharing reels has grown even faster and has more than doubled on both apps in just the last six months. The next bottleneck that we are focused on to continue growing reels is improving monetization efficiency or the revenue that is generated per minute of reels watched. Currently, the monetization efficiency of reels is much less than feed. So the more that reels grows, even though it adds engagement to the system overall, it takes some time away from feed and we actually lose money. So Reels has been doing great and they are not yet fully monetized yet. I think it will be a tailwind in the coming earnings as they get better monetization out of Reels. Just like they did with Stories back when Snapchat was in a thing. It took a year, a year and a half, but Stories got monetized like feed eventually. And to close off, he lists the areas the company is currently focusing on. He says AI, including our discovery engine, ads, business messaging, and increasingly generative AI, and the future platforms for the metaverse. From an operating perspective, we are focused on efficiency and continuing to streamline the company so we can execute these priorities as well as possible and build a better company while improving our business performance. The part that is interesting to me is you can see that Meta is talking about generative AI in the earnings call. And I have seen some Meta members talking about how ChatGPT is not really a big thing and they are doing better. So I am really curious what they will come up with in that area. We know they are working on AI that will help advertisers to create content like videos for their advertisements and so forth. So to sum it up, the goods for Meta are buybacks. They have very heavy ammunition in that area. Return to growth. Their comparables from 2022 will be easy to beat in my opinion, especially with the focus on efficiency. Their bottom line can grow again even if it will be under 2021 levels. Potential TikTok ban. India has banned TikTok before the United States. And I believe eventually people will realize TikTok is much more of a threat than a spy balloon. Margins and free cash flow return. I think another important return from the layoffs and company-wide efficiency efforts are their margins and cash flows will return again. And people will remember the cash cow, the family of apps is. And the bets are CapEx spending. Even though they lowered their guidance, they will still be spending a lot of money in capital expenditures. And finally, a slow red market. Many companies are looking to cut costs in the current high interest environment. And this will likely lead to a decrease in ad spending that will affect both Google and Meta in 2023. So that was it for today. I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one.